Hello everybody and welcome to Geek Street Journal. This is the weekly web show that tells you about interesting dates coming up in the week ahead. Before I get started on today's dates, I have a very important question for you guys. I recently went comic book shopping, sorry for ducking out of frame there, this Saturday and got some rad posters. I also got some fantastic comic books like Batgirl for a friend of mine. Morgan actually, I got it from Morgan. Then I have a Superman and Boba Fett. What I'd like to do is get both of these things and the posters all plastered up on my wall. I don't want to tape these, and I don't want to tack these, and I don't want to wreck anything. So if you have any ideas for putting up posters, please leave them in the dungeon section below so I can check them out and uh, improve the set. You guys could be responsible for helping improve the set. Tomorrow or today, depending on when you are watching this, will be the summer solstice. Alternatively, it is the winter solstice. Why? Because those koalas be crazy. You see, what is summer solstice here in the northern part of the world is the winter solstice on the bottom half of the world. To help explain this better, it's a fascinating piece of science, I have enlisted the help of my wonderful brain. I don't click away, I'm going to make this extremely interesting for you. I'm now going to explain why the summer solstice is different than the winter solstice depending on which hemisphere you live in. First off, the hemisphere is which top or half bottom part of the Earth you live on. Now, the Earth does not orbit my radiation face, my radiating face. Regardless, it does not orbit this wonderful beaming piece of beauty with uh, a straight orbit. It in fact orbits like so which means that as it orbits, it does this. Coming all the way around to the other side where it rests like this. Now, if we pretend that this is the center of like a ball, uh, like, uh, like an apple core, right? And then we have the bump from this part of the Earth and the bump from this part of the Earth, and North America's up here and Australia's down there. And of course, this is all rotating, but it's rotating along this axis. Following me so far? Good, this gets easy. When it comes around like this, this part of the axis and this part of the Earth is closer to the sun, which means it's going to be hotter. This happens once every year. However, it is at this exact moment that Australia, in the southern hemisphere, is farthest away from the sun than it's going to be in the year. Because it's rotating, that also means the Antarctic is furthest away than it's going to be, and that the Cape of Good Hope is as far away from the sun as it's going to be in that year. Thus making this extremely cold, this extremely hot, making this the winter solstice and this the summer solstice. Now, in one, in 0.5 of uh, the year of 65, in exactly the other half of the year, it's gonna look like this. With Australia closest to my hotness, ladies, and the northern hemisphere, including England, America, and the top part of Russia, are going to be the furthest away. The southern hemisphere's hottest part of the year, the summer solstice, and this uh, north hemisphere is the coldest part. Of course, it's all rotating like the Earth does, and this is how the solstices work. Now, because of that, that means that you Australians should go to bed early, and all of you people in the northern hemisphere should party. And that is the summer and winter solstice explained. Thank you, lightsaber. Our next date is June 26th, and it is Shrimp Day. Now, while one could go into one's own personal repertoire of recipes and cite all the ways one can make shrimp in a Forrest Gump-esque style, I, however, am vegetarian and cannot really, like, endorse the mass trawling of shrimp, so I have decided to be a bully and take this day to pick on short people. So this is a day to pick on all of those short people, Except that me being six foot four, that makes everybody but LeBron James the butt of a joke, which is fine because he could totally beat me up anyway. Tell me, aren't you a little short to be a stormtrooper? No, but for real guys, short people can be awesome heroes as well. For example, Link. Oh, hold on. There we go. What kind of hero doesn't have a hat? Most heroes, but his hat is very, okay, there we go. That's a nice hat. This short little guy saved the kingdom of Hyrule like a billion times as seen in my chronological history of Legends of Zelda Link at the end of the video and in the dungeon below. Also, the Hobbit, though somebody brought the Hobbits to Isengard, they also brought the ring into Moldor and defeated Sauron and Dragon. I don't have a Hobbit. I do have extremely hairy toes, but I have this little dragon who I think I might name Smog. I can't help it, guys. I'm a sucker for dragons. They're just so cool. I mean, look at them banking and 
and he sees a sheep and he dies. Thank you for watching this episode of Geek Street Journal. Remember that is the summer solstice on Friday and then whatever day June 26th is, that is shrimp day. Eat some seafood or cheese, short people. I know I will. Thank you guys very much for watching. Bye.